Hey everybody, it's me, it's Steve Simonson, and I'm back again with another random ad hoc episode of the Awesomers.com podcast, as I like to do. And today I'm joined by the one and only Melissa Simonson. How are you, Melissa? I'm doing really well. How are you, Steve? I'm good. How's your dog doing? I can hear it in the background trying to escape yep. the... I don't know why you decided to put your dog in a cupboard, Melissa, but that's rude. <laughs> that's really rude. Apparently now that was the wrong decision I have now learned. <laughs> well... I'm personally, I like dogs and pets in general, but Melissa oh. is a tyrant and doesn't want Oh them. yeah, you're the pet lover and I'm the, I'm the hater. <laughs> All right. Well, um, apparently the level of sarcasm may or may not be uh, uh, strong enough for people to pick it up. Uh, <laughs> so listen, everybody, we're talking about the Empowery Women's Conference today. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Melissa is my sister and although she may be the one and only Melissa, she in fact is one of several sisters. Uh, one of a plethora of sisters that I have. And uh, she happens to be the youngest in our uh, uh, brood. So uh, I'm number one, and, uh, and she's not. And so I think we'll just leave it at that. Uh, Melissa, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, actually, people ask about our connection a lot. And so um, there are many sisters. There are also many brothers. So um, I think people find it interesting that you were the first born. I would not say number one. Number person. one is fine. Let's <laughs> carry on with that. Yeah. Um, but then there's actually seven in between us. So Steve is the first and I'm the ninth. And um, and there's there's several in between. So uh, I have four sisters and four brothers. Steve has five sisters and, and three brothers then. I've never thought yeah, about presumably. it. Yeah, I, I really was told there would be no math today, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to question it, but uh, in fact, the only takeaway, Awesomers, that you need to have today is that Steve is number one. And, uh, <laughs> go ahead, write that in your diary, Melissa, uh, so you don't forget. Dear so, diary. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, so listen, let's talk about this women's conference. So first of all, let's set the stage. So Empowery in February of 2020 is holding a women's conference. Can you give us the dates and the location, and then we'll dive into the why behind it? Yeah, so it's going to be held in Las Vegas. I'm sorry. I'm so wrong about Lord. that. It's Los right, Angeles. Well, we got the right. Uh, the the venue has not been apparently uh, agreed on. So let's let's. We're not going to edit this. We're going to just let everybody see that we are uh, totally prepared. Where is the venue? The venue is Los Angeles, California. All right. And, so uh, uh, for those keeping score at home, it's Los Angeles, uh, the city of angels. And uh, what are the dates, uh, Melissa? It's February twentieth and twenty first of twenty twenty. Okay, so February twentieth. And 21st? Yeah, that's right. All right. Of this upcoming uh, 2020, if you're listening to this after these dates, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, get a time machine. You, you've missed out on something great. But if you're listening before that, and in particular, if you're a woman, you should be getting those tickets uh, and getting on, on board really quick. And so, Melissa, how do they find out more info about this thing? Let's give an action step they can take. Where do they go? They can go to empowery.org slash women's conference and there's um there's more information about it there the speakers are now posted and um and we're posting more every day as things change you know we're adding more speakers as well and in addition to that you can also purchase your tickets there so okay so uh and for the awesomers out there this is episode number 164 of the awesomers.com podcast and if you go to awesomers.com slash 164 then we'll put links in there as well. Uh, there's no affiliate things. There never is. Uh, anything I do is all volunteer, and it's for the benefit of Empowery. And Empowery, we'll take a step back from the Women's Conference. Just uh, uh, We're going to do just a quick little hit on Empowery. It's a nonprofit member-owned co-op. Uh, Melissa, what do you think the, the number one reason why people should join Empowery? What, what's their compelling reason? I mean, I think Empowery is a place you go where you can actually trust people. I think that it's a resource where you know that when someone says, try this resource, it really is in your benefit and not um, maybe an affiliate who might be getting money. Because in Empowery's case, you are receiving the cash back, 51% or more of what comes into the co-op. So that's a pretty, pretty big reason, I think. Yeah, so uh, the, the idea when you have kind of a, a combined group, uh, a cooperative, if you will, of people is we take our best results, we take our best experience, and we put them in front of the members, and then we hold um, accountable uh, everyone for their actions. Uh, so if a, if a supplier or a, a manufacturer or a service provider, whatever it is, is amazing and awesomer, as I like to say, then they should be held accountable and get lots and lots of business and be rewarded for their excellence. And if they suck, they should be held to account as well and either remedy the situation or 
get bounced out of the co-op. Ultimately, uh, that works for the members as well. If members are great and awesome and they, they do their part, um, that's great. And if they're not contributing, then they probably shouldn't be part of the co-op, right? So it's really to create that synergy and to, to try to get everyone who's willing to put their skin in the game, to put their name on the line, to have a safe place to you know, find referrals, to find resources, to find answers in a non-competitive and I would think um, pretty unique way. So uh, one of the other things that I would just add on to Melissa's point is that you know we kind of have access to a Rolodex. Uh, good luck, millennials. You can Google what a Rolodex is. But <laughs> we have a list of contacts and connections and people that is, I, I would say, you know, unrivaled uh, by most people. And that's just because I've been around forever. Um, Evan Hackle, who helped uh, put this thing together and helped with the legal formation and so forth, um, we, we've just been around a long, long time. And so we've solved a bunch of problems that entrepreneurs face day to day, e-commerce entrepreneurs in particular. And we should point out this is an e-commerce effort. Yeah. Yes, Melissa. Well, what's the full name of this operation? The Empowery E-commerce Cooperative. Yeah. So e-commerce is right in the name. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you're in e-commerce, you should be part of the co-op because it's all dedicated to helping members. And so what, that, that's probably enough on the Empowery side. We'll probably come back and do another episode on, on Empowery later. But uh, how did the idea for the Women's Conference come about? What, what was the uh, genesis of that? Um, you know, I think that um, the idea was kind of out there. And I know that there's many other industries and, um, and stuff that will do that type of event. Even when we went to, um, I think it was IRCE, um, you know, we met, there was a FedEx party. They even have a women's uh, empowerment meeting for all of their employees and stuff like that. And we really don't have anything like that in e-commerce. And so I think as a, a team, we started to think, you know, how could we turn this into reality and really make it successful? Yeah, I, I definitely... You know, there's, uh, there's no such thing as a unique idea in this world, right? So, uh, done something somewhere. But the, what is unique is that for e-commerce and for women specifically, there's never been an effort. And I do remember I was on stage. I was on a panel at a conference a year or two ago, maybe. Maybe it's close to two years now. And, and a, a woman steps up to the microphone and she says, hey, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, all of you big sellers up there. There's five of you. You're all men. Uh, what's wrong with women? Why can't we do it? And yeah. oh my goodness, first of all, let me just tell you the premise of that question is not ideal. So I don't know if it was a gotcha question, like uh, we should be ashamed for being on the stage or if she legitimately felt somehow not capable. And, and my answer ultimately was, uh, first of all, there's, there's no reason why any woman can't be up here. There's plenty of women who have achieved these same numbers. Uh, sometimes it's just the length of time they've been in business. Sometimes it's access to those people. It's, it has nothing to do with male or female. You can succeed as a man. You can succeed as a woman. You can succeed any race, creed, color, religion. I don't care that none of that matters. Yeah. Uh, and I was, I was disappointed with, with kind of that question. And, and that definitely started for me to go, well, you know, let's, let's foster a little bit more proaction, yes. proactivity in the women's side. So uh, how about you, Melissa? What did you find out at IRCE? Did any of the women in e-commerce care? Well, and it was actually after that um, that we, uh, I think it was the next event that we went to, we started organizing um, the women's conference and asking people what location they would like. And we also asked, what kind of cop topics would you like to have covered? And I actually, I remember seeing your um, interview with that and, and that woman's question. And, um, and I started to realize as people wanted to have these particular topics covered, that that is just sort of a prevalent mindset, at least in this type of industry, at least in e-commerce, because many of the topic suggestions came in saying, you know, what is lacking in women that makes it, you know, difficult for us to achieve the same results. And I honestly, again, I really don't think that there's a difference, but I think that if you have a perceived difference, then you're limiting your own capabilities. And, um, and I definitely want us to do something that, you know, helps people realize that there's really nothing that they can't do, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, everybody kind of imposes their own limiting beliefs in one way or another. And I do think there's some element of just access and experience. So, you know, how many female entrepreneurs have there been in the, when I started 30 years ago? Not so many. And that was part of my response is, you know, today we're in a very unique place where Amazon sellers of any kind, right? Doesn't matter male, female, race, creed, color, any of that, that doesn't matter. Everybody's kind of got the, the same access to the platform. 
And so sometimes it's just the amount of time it takes to, to kind of tick over uh, to a certain scale or a certain limit. I, yeah, I, well, I would, uh, if you don't mind, I would also add to that that there is also a perception among men and women, I think, in this uh, industry that, you know, there's particular faces that you see on stage. And I think there is a kind of perception that maybe it's because of the confidence that they bring to the stage or something like that, that maybe is more hesitant or not the same as what we're used to seeing with women. Uh, I think that it's more men are asked to be on stage and fewer women would assert themselves into that position if they're not specifically asked. And I think that um, with that, then, you know, we tend to see many of the same faces on the stage and we tend to see, you know, the same type of people on the stage. And I think that if we can just have this event where we see, you know, it, it, we could have an event that's entirely women on the stage. There's that many qualified women who are experts and really knowledgeable and have fantastic, wonderful, inspiring stories for how they came to, to be where they're at. If we can do that in one event, then certainly we can maybe start to see more and more women on the stages at you know, Prosper and SellerCon and all these other events as well. Yeah, yeah. Let me just mansplain why Melissa's wrong. Okay, <laughs> Melissa. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, I do think it's it's about just kind of um, the access. And so let's talk about what makes this event different. So first of all, it's called a women's conference. Uh, let's cover the, the the basic premise. Does that mean men cannot go, Melissa? It does not. There is not a no boys allowed sign that we're going to put up. Men are welcome. I know that there's a couple specific, uh, you know, people that, you know, they want to go as uh, husband and wife teams. And that's so welcome. That's so wonderful to see, you know, not just husbands, but also just men in this industry who want to support the women that they know in this industry. I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, but there will only be women on the stage. And that's why it will be a different tone, uh, I think, for this conference. Yeah, and I think that's unique, right? This is actually being produced by women, right? Melissa and Megan and the, the gang at Empower are kind of taking the lion's share of this thing uh, for the production bit. Um, the only women on the stage, uh, and I would I would guess that there would be a, a large contingency of women in the audience as well. Uh, yes. And I would further say, if you're a woman and you're in e-commerce and you're not there, why not? You, yeah. I mean, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because when we have you know this prevailing, not necessarily pervasive, but certainly prevailing wisdom that you know women are somehow um, not achieving the same results or they don't have access or they don't wh whatever the gap is this conference is the perfect time for women to answer and show up and go, yeah, there is no gap. We're, we're on it. And I, I would also say that the subject matter may be tuned to women, right? If it's, yeah. if women are speaking on stage, there, there could be unique things that are talked about that uh, resonate with women more than if I'm on stage and I'm talking about whatever it is, my stupid idea of the day is right. Uh, Absolutely. I, I think one of the right, biggest parts of this. Oh. You just agreed that I had a stupid idea of the day. <laughs> That was a laugh line, and you're like, absolutely. So <laughs> we're not editing that out, everyone. Just to be clear, Matt, uh, Melissa thinks I have stupid ideas. You, I, I want everyone to just bear witness here to what happens when I'm near my brothers. They all want to just <laughs> pick on me all the time. I'm going to have to pause so I can cry this one out. This is, oh, <laughs> gosh, uh, let me, all right. I said I wasn't going to do this. Uh, I'm not going to cry. Carry on. What were you saying? Absolutely. I was going to say, absolutely. I think that um, <laughs> one of the biggest differences in tone and the way that uh, women can expect to receive the information from the stage this time that's different is that, you know, sometimes when you go to an event um, and there's men on stage, of course, you know, if it's an expert, you want to learn from whoever it is. But there is a different vibe or energy or tone or something, and it feels like maybe they're speaking to men. Uh, in the audience. And, you know, I know I've been to several this year and one of them, you know, they kind of get up on the stage and they want to bring up the energy and rah, and, and they want the whole audience to do that. And maybe there's some women in there that uh, feel like that is, is to their same testosterone level. But for me, it was a little overkill on the testosterone. And it, it's just, it wasn't speaking to me. And the difference I think in this kind of a thing, and even when I see women on stage at other conferences is that all of a sudden I can see, okay, I was doubting myself. I'm wondering what's, what's wrong with, with women, you know, whatever the question was. And then I see these women on stage and I see, you know, she's, she's struggling with mom guilt. She's struggling with traveling and, you know, trying to get this work-life balance. She's, 
doing all of these, these same struggles and she's overcome it and reached this success level. And all of a sudden, now that's much more possible because it's coming from someone who I identify with. And that's a really big difference. You know, I was just thinking about launching a new product line of uh, a baby products called Mom Guilt. What do you think? Is it a good one? <laughs> I think there's so much already in the world. I'm not sure it would be a big well, seller. <laughs> uh, well, that, this is a, a good example of how uh, uh, men may not see the paradigm in the same way that women do. So I'm giving you lots of good examples here, ladies. Uh, I, I can't... I can't uh, emphasize this enough that this is a big risk for uh, Melissa and the Empower uh, Co-op in general, right? We're, we're basically putting a stake in the ground and saying, hey, women need to stand up and be counted. Yeah. And that means you have to show up to this thing. It's not expensive. Uh, Melissa, what are the prices on this thing? Let's, let's get that. Um, right now, I think the prices went up once from the early bird pricing, but right now the tickets are at $5.49 for general admission and eight ninety nine for VIP. And then if you buy two at a time, like if you're doing a husband, wife, or your partner in business, uh, there's a little deal in there as well. Get a Scooby snack off. Yeah. So what, what does a general admission ticket get you? A general admission ticket um, gets you your meals uh, for two days, including breakfast and lunch. And it gets you um, the, you know, access to the conference itself. Um, and there are, there are in this venue that we've chosen, there's certain areas that will have VIP access and non-VIP access. Uh, the VIP tickets, on the other hand, they get you access to um, the increased networking. So the nighttime mingling with the speakers and, and stuff like that. Okay, that's good. Uh, I've been to a couple conferences that the VIP ticket had no discernible difference to the regular ticket. And I was, uh, well, let's just say I wasn't happy uh, because yeah. I paid a bunch more money. But I guarantee you, Melissa knows how to give those proper um, incentives and those differences so that VIPs can feel, hey, I am VIP. Um, yeah, well, and the food is going to, oh, sorry, Steve. <laughs> There's a little lag. I, I love it. The one women talk over me. This is an outcome. <laughs> Go ahead. I just get so excited. So um, the food will be great no matter what. You know, it's a beautiful venue and it, it will feel VIP all the way for the other people. But the access to the VIP dinner will be especially VIP because one of the restaurants that we're looking at hosting this in has been featured on the Food Network. It's, it's kind of famous. The food is going to just be spectacular. So from the speakers who some of them, you know, I think there's one who's done a TED Talk and there's some, the, the speakers are going to be very high caliber. The food is going to be very high caliber and the uh, VIP events after the regular day will be very high level as well. Yeah, I just want to share with everybody that, you know, if you actually start doing the math on how much a venue costs and meals, so breakfast and lunch times two days, you know, plus venue costs, you know, plus the, the random small modicum uh, to, to uh, you know, get some of the details covered. Oh, this is not a money maker, right? Yeah. It, it's extraordinarily expensive at hotels and things like that to, to put these things on. A lot of people don't fully really uh, appreciate that. So this is not uh, a walk off money maker. And plus, any of the benefit that ends up at the nonprofit Empowery Cooperative goes to the benefit of building the co-op bigger and better. So at, even at the end of the day, if there happens to be a shekel left over, then it's still uh, going to a good cause. So uh so tell us, uh, wasn't there uh, some sort of bonus day for the, the, the folks who act early? Uh, Melissa, tell yes. me. Yes. Yeah, until, um, so we, this is definitely very limited, but for those who buy their tickets early and those who, um, you know, just basically speak up first, uh, we're having an in, informal, unhosted um, sort of mastermind spa session. So we're doing a spa mastermind the night before uh, we actually kick off this event. And I'm really excited about that. I know that there's, there's been a couple um, non-e-commerce type um, women's conferences that have done this kind of thing. And I just think that it could be really beneficial to be among friends talking about, you know, getting to know each other and, um, and getting to know what, um, what you can learn from each other. Because there's guaranteed going to be something you can learn from everybody in that room. Yeah, for sure. So the, the recipe for success here is uh, go over to the empowery.org slash women's conference uh, and buy your ticket, obviously. If you're smart, you'll get a VIP. Um, and it does not, if you're not smart, you don't get a VIP, but uh, I would definitely get the VIPs until they're sold out. And then GA is as good as it gets. Um, so general admission is certainly a, a fine backup plan. It really is. It, being in LA, it's very accessible. There's mm -hmm a ton of direct flights to LA from all around the world. 
the venue you've picked out is very nice and has uh, good hotel rates. I would also say book your hotel room as soon as you can. I think, Melissa, don't you have some sort of uh, – a uh, small group block that they can get advantage on if they're the early adopters? Yes, yeah, and that will change with time as well. So even if you're, you know, one of the first, you know, 40 or something who buys your ticket, if you wait until the last minute, you're still one of the first 40 for some reason, then you still will not be able to get uh, as great of a rate. But the rate that we have negotiated is fantastic, especially for Manhattan Beach where the venue is. Okay, yeah. So Manhattan Beach in uh, in Los Angeles area is pretty sweet. And of course, it's a great time to be in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, if, when you live in Los Angeles, you kind of just take for granted all the weather. But when you are uh, under a foot of snow or uh, <laughs> learning these, whatever they're, the Arctic bomb blast, they have these new um, words on the Weather Channel they've uh, come up with, it, which are hilarious. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're always about like almost apocalyptic snow conditions. And if you live around any of that, you probably want to have a little sunbreak. So um, the, the, the unhosted spa mastermind the night before sounds amazing. Uh, that's probably going to be uh, something that is very short lived. There's only, a, 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 I would say, a limited number of spots for that. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely limited. It's um, for the venue, you know, there's a limited amount of space, there's a limited amount of employees. So, you know, it's first come first serve for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, act quick if you want to get in on that. And then uh, obviously the, the tickets uh, at some point will go and, you know, this is meant to be an inclusive event, but also somewhat exclusive to the extent that this is not a thousand person conference, right? This is starting out, we got to, uh, again, plant the flag in the ground and, and say, all right, you know, women, you've talked about access, you've talked about you know, all these things that you uh, want and Melissa is delivering those for you. And now it's time to stand up and be counted, get out there and go to the conference and show your support. You're going to hear speakers that you don't always hear. This is not the normal echo chamber, um, but it's topics of primary interest to Amazon sellers. Is that fair to say, Melissa? It's absolutely fair to say this is, it's definitely applicable to you if you sell on Amazon currently, or if you have uh, any ambitions toward going into your own Shopify store even uh, so that you're diversifying. Uh, there's a lot of topics that are specifically related to Amazon and e-commerce, but every speaker will have an element of speaking to their story and how they came to where they're at and how they combat the difficulties that they face, whether it's as women or as entrepreneurs or as women entrepreneurs. There you go. Yeah, you can be, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. You can be a woman, you can be an entrepreneur and you can be a woman <laughs> entrepreneur. Um, so listen, I, I think this is an important thing. Uh, you know, people talk about stuff all the time and I, you know, it's fine. Talk, talk as much as you want, but action is where things actually get done. And this is a time where Melissa, um, she's pushed the empowery board, uh, which by the way, Melissa's on the board. Uh, so is Aaron Taylor. Um, and she's been a, a supporter of this idea as well. And by the way, the male members of the board are also supporters, right? This is not an us versus them. This is how do we make sure that we uh, create an environment where everybody wins, right? We're yeah. about e-commerce entrepreneurs and it doesn't matter, again, male, female, doesn't matter where you're from. You know, we're a global place. We don't care about religion. We don't care about politics. We don't care about any of that stuff. You are either a top performing awesomer or you're not. And the rest of it doesn't matter to me. So, uh, Melissa, why don't you lay that uh, URL on them once again? Okay, it is Empowery. It's Empower, but with a Y at the end. So e m p o w e r y dot org slash women's conference. Okay, and uh, for the alternative uh, is awesomers dot com slash one six four. We'll have a link on that page. Uh, again, no affiliate stuff for for me or for awesomers. That's not how I work this thing. This is a, a volunteer operation at Awesomers, and it is with Empower as well. We just want to bring you stuff that we think is cool and interesting. Um, Melissa, any parting words on why the Women's Conference is a, is a can't-miss kind of uh, conference? Yeah, I will say two things to that. Um, I've always admired your event, Steve, for the kind of the close-knit quality that you bring to it. It's not, you know, these thousand, two, three, four thousand people events. It's um, smaller events where you can get to know the people who are sitting next to you because if you're doing it right at an event, not only are you gonna learn from the people who are speakers and take the opportunity if you can to get the VIP tickets to talk to them at the dinners, but you're also talking to the people next to you because they might 
they might be somebody that you talk to for years to come because they might have gone through the same thing. And this is very much like that. You should be able to talk to many, many, many of the people there and actually form a real connection because this will not be a really huge event. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to say is um, for, um, you know, actually when I was in China, one of our male members asked us, you know, why is this a women's conference? Why isn't it just a regular conference? And I was like, well, we did one of those. And it's not that Empowery, again, is not for all entrepreneurs, uh, we are, but um, there are many events that are for both. And when I say both, I mean that, again, many women feel like that's a little bit catered toward men. And there is not one yet that is just for women or that speaks directly to women. And so it's not to say that, um, that we have anything against men, of course, you know, Steve's one of the founders of <laughs> Empowery, but um, it is to say that while this is not meant to be exclusive, it is meant to be one of the many events that has only women on the stage. And uh, excuse me, one of many events, and this one only has women on the stage. And again, that's to sort of bring this idea that maybe, maybe the other conferences will start to recognize the talent and, and stuff that is, uh, is there in, in the women. Yeah, by the way, for those uh, who can't see me, when, when Melissa's speaking, you can only see Melissa, but I'm making faces at her when she's talking about <laughs> it's not uh, women against men, and so then that makes her laugh. So that's just uh, the brother-sister uh, chemistry that happens. <laughs> I'm going to tease her pretty much full time. And, uh, and listen, you guys can go complain about it at the conference and talk about what a jerk I am, which is not untrue. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm a hilarious brother, and, uh, and also... Um, I enjoy making her laugh at inopportune times. So anyway. yeah, this is a rare occurrence where he's interviewing me. And so the nervousness that I get when I'm just like normally like talking about work stuff with him is totally inherent in this entire discussion. This is why he's not allowed at the women's conference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> I, that's well earned. And by the way, I will, uh, uh, I will not be at the women's conference. I will be going to, uh, uh various parts of the middle East and, uh, Europe in February and March, and uh, I may have other things to announce for people, uh, not necessarily conflicting with this time, certainly, but uh, maybe a little meetup in Israel, maybe a little meetup in Dubai, and uh, so we'll talk about that later. But I, I really, first of all, if you're uh, a man listening to this, I, I want you to support us. I want you to make sure that you share this event. You can share the com slash 164. You can share this podcast. We're going to put a, a YouTube version of it as well. Uh, share it with people and let people know about it, even if you don't see yourself coming to the event yourself. Uh, but women, you should be there. That, it's not optional for you. you. It's mandatory because if we don't show our support, if we're not able to, to make this thing a memorable event, then all of the, the talk and the conjecture about what is and why and this and that is like, well, because nobody took action. Yep. And it's right now, it's the time for women to take action most of all. And I, I want to say this, Melissa already talked about this, but I'm going to make it a formula. So the content on stage is you're already getting X, right? That is extraordinary value. And Melissa's working her guts out to have great speakers with very salient content. In fact, we may talk a little bit more about that content and extend this here in just a minute, but you, you already have X on stage, but it's the networking and the relationship that you know, you put a, a multiplier times that it's not X times two, it's X to the power of two or X to the power of eight and that's where the, the the real benefit from these types of events come in and particularly when it's going to be i would say you know uh, oriented towards women and a lot of women there you get to talk about the things you don't always get to talk about and i think that's a really unique thing so melissa uh before we just kind of tie this thing off what are some of the topics that are going to be talked about uh, you know it's for amazon sellers e-commerce sellers in general what are some of the topics that you have coming up on stage can you share that yeah, so um, let's see, we've got um, some uh, people who are going to talk about, you know, really the nitty gritty topics. So, um, so we're going to talk about chatbots and we're going to talk about, um, there's some uh, PPC we're going to talk about and uh, we're going to talk about social media and creating content. Um, but we're also going to talk about, you know, the relationship that you have with money and how that might be affecting your business. And so there, there's going to be kind of a balance between the speakers of, you know, people who are speaking about, you know, content-based stuff that's like, you know, PPC and sponsored products and that kind of stuff that you're used to hearing, but there's also going to be a balance between them of speakers who are talking about, you know, um, 
inspirational stories, motivational stories, and, um, and things that maybe get your mind, body, and spirit all in line so that you can achieve more than you could have if you're just looking at, you know, the, the big picture or the small details, either one, you got to kind of see everything. There you go. So it's tactical, actionable stuff uh, throughout the event yep. uh, mixed in with that big picture strategic and mindset stuff. And I'm, I, I talk about this regularly on Awesomers, but we have to break the paradigms of normal. Otherwise, we stay normal. So if you want to be Awesomers, you got to break those paradigms. And sometimes the paradigms are just sitting right in our own uh, mm -hmm. noggin. So we got to we got to bust those things up. So uh, thanks for the time, Melissa. Um, yeah, uh, it's, this has been episode number 164 of the awesomers.com podcast. So awesomers.com slash 164. Uh, if you're not, uh, at the women's conference in particular, if you're a woman, then you're just wrong. So get that right, uh, today and go to that, uh, website and, and get your ticket. And thanks again, Melissa. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Steve.